Hi there, welcome to another in our series of UK economy updates. This time we're going to take a look at an important issue at the moment, the issue of whether or not we have a tight labour market. Our labour market is tight if the, the number of vacant jobs are plentiful, plenty of jobs around, but available workers are not so plentiful, they're scarce. And that often happens when unemployment has come down to low levels and growth is strong with lots of businesses, lots of employers looking to expand their workforce. But it can also happen, by the way, when there's a decline in the percentage of people of working age who are actively participating in the labour market. It can happen when there's an increase in the levels of economic inactivity. Uh, People who might have been looking for work but have chosen for one reason or another to stop searching actively for work. Now, take a look at this chart really interesting this shows the number of unemployed people per registered vacancy in the uk since 2019 so the autumn of 2019 just those uh, five six months before the first covid wave hit the uk and you can see that the uh, the figure was 1.5 rising 1.5 uh, in 2019 but then suddenly shot up to 2020 clearly there were uh, far fewer vacancies available as companies were just you know, cutting back on how many people they wanted to hire during the pandemic. But since then, there has been a significant sustained fall. And for a little while in, uh, in sort of August, uh, Ju- July, August time, it fell below one. In other words, the number of vacancies was l- higher than the number of unemployed people, as measured by the Job Seekers Allowance. So there's about a million, 1.3 job vacancies and about just under 1.3 million unemployed. So this suggests that we do indeed have a tight labour market. Uh, When the figure is one, there are as many unfilled vacancies as there are measured unemployed. So what are some of the consequences? What are some of the macroeconomic effects of, uh, of, a, of a tight labour market? Well, first of all, it can contribute to the supply crunch. This is where businesses would like to increase production, would like to ramp up their supply, but they can't because they face shortages of, of obviously, component parts and uh, essential uh, um, key bits of the production process. But also they might be short of the skilled labour they need to expand production. Uh, a, la- a, a tight labour market tends other things being the same, to increase the relative bargaining power of people in work, people who have a job. And we're seeing a little bit of that. There's more industrial action. Obviously, inflation is a key factor of this. But uh, if you have a job and if there are shortages, then in a sense, the bargaining power shifts a little bit towards you. And you might then see an increase in union pay demands. Uh, A tight labour market can lead to cost push inflation. As businesses, employers pay high wages, not just to hire new staff, but also perhaps to retain them, to keep them on the payroll, stop them leaving. And some people are arguing that this tight labour market is actually one of the factors causing the Bank of England to be increasing interest rates. As I speak, they are currently 3%, the highest since 2008. And some economists have accredited this to the fact that the labour market remains tight, leading to higher wage inflation which, of course, threatens the inflation target. One of the background issues I think is worth exploring is the issue of long COVID and related um, health, chronic health conditions that are linked to the prevalence, the persistence of the COVID pandemic. Uh, there are some quite adverse trends in well-being at the moment, the incidence of mental health problems, uh, loneliness, uh, a rise in diabetes and things and other related health measures and uh, worsening health amongst the wider population can lead to uh, a fall in economic activity. People decide perhaps to retire early or they have to retire, uh, stop stop looking for work to look after an elderly relative, for example. There's been about a 500,000 increase in economic inactivity in the UK which is clearly, clearly means there are fewer people looking for those jobs that are there. And what about the business response? How, how do businesses respond to this? Well, I think you'll find, if you look at the news most days, there's nearly always a story about a business that's raised pay. Pret, Pret a manger, has raised pay for the third time in just over a year. Quite a few other businesses have done likewise. Tesco has raised pay certainly at least twice. Uh, so here's an example, the raising pay of... Um, uh, by 5%, another 5% for most cafe workers 
higher rates for skilled baristas. So it's the obvious way, isn't it? The price mechanism works. If there's a tight labour market, if there's excess demand for labour, paying conditions should improve. Other businesses are trying to change their recruitment strategies and in particular offering perhaps more part-time flexible employment, especially for older workers who might actually have taken early retirement to try and encourage them back into the labour force. Uh, something like 25% of the two and a half or 2.2 million people working in hospitality are now aged 50 and above. Traditionally, hospitality is seen as a young person's game, but I suppose there is no longer. And the head of the CBI... Tony Danker uh, is uh, reported this week as arguing that one of the biggest problems we do face is the tight labour market, the ongoing labour shortage. shortage. And he argues that it can be solved by allowing for more increased immigration. Uh, In other words, to to reform the visa systems and things uh, going forward. That would be a long-term strategy to try to address these issues. So what is the tight labour market? It's when demand for labour is pretty high. Uh, Lots of vacancies, but not many unemployed workers to fill them. And I think that's certainly the case in the UK. As we go into recession, the labour market tightness might um, mitigate a little bit, it might soften, but it is a big factor worth knowing about as part of your macroeconomics as we head into 2023. Huge thanks for joining me. Take care, stay safe, stay happy. See you sometime soon.